Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper, so happy to be with you guys here today. So this knife blank had been sitting in my tool drawer for probably about a year, maybe even a year and a half before I actually got started on it. It's one of those impulse buys. It was I added it onto an order, um, and I started looking at the shape of it, and I had a really hard time figuring out where I wanted to end the handle at. You'll notice when I get these scales cut out that I didn't end up going with the shape of that original template. I think this is actually the third shape I was doing. The finger hole towards the top of there it was just really hard for me to figure out where I wanted to terminate it at. Nothing looked quite right. I think the straight across the top that I ended up with is about as good as it was going to get. When I had originally gotten this knife, I had thought that with those cutouts in the center that I could make something that uh, kind of hinged and folded out and there was a little hidden recess in there to put stuff in. Didn't end up working out where it was thick enough to do that. I could have cut some recesses in the holes of the wood, but decided to go in a different direction. I always do most of the major shaping on the belt sander, but with the small curves like this, I couldn't get in there with it, so going in and sawing out the majority of the material and then coming back and cleaning it up with a file. The other thing you can see in this shot on the handle scales on the top is where I rounded them down over into the blade. You want to get that profile done or else you'll scratch it up trying to sand it in later. So this is an end mill, and I had kind of been wanting to try it out on my drill press and see how well it worked. Um, another impulse buy off eBay, but I wanted to test it out. And since I couldn't use pins through these holes, since they're obviously too big, I decided I would go in and I would hollow out that whole recess and fill it with some epoxy. I had figured since these were used on metal that it wouldn't have that much of a problem with wood and it would cut through it really quickly. It didn't end up cutting through it as quickly as I thought, so, and I didn't have as much control making it parallel with the sides, so I decided to get the major holes drilled out with that just to start, and then I came back in with uh, some files where I felt like I had some more control over the process and could shape it a little bit more easily. I knew that I wanted to have some coloring in the epoxy on the center. It wasn't a very clean metal line on the inside, so I knew I wanted to hide it a little bit. This is a pearl coat, so you would mix it in with an automotive paint usually. It also works really well for coloring epoxy, and you can get some cool shimmering patterns with it. This is some aluminum tape. Uh, I always use that. It seems to seal better than masking tape or packing tape, but sealed the bottom so I can pour it up from the top and then I went back and hit it with a heat gun to get all the bubbles out. The wood I'm using in here is a curly maple and curly maple uh, seems to have just the right amount of tannins in it where you can use this mixture and it'll bring out a really cool color in it. It is apple cider vinegar and steel wool dissolved so it goes in and it reacts with the tannins and it'll darken the wood chemically. I like this better than like a stain you would get because it you really keeps the figuring of the wood and can intensify it. Um, but I want it to be darker to match that green color on the inside. And there you can really see how the figuring of the wood comes out. This is a semi-gloss polyurethane finish. I had decided I was going to use this as a knife you can just kind of throw around the shop and not have to worry too much about. Um, I started dipping a lot of these in the polyurethane. You can dip them, hang them up, you'll get a little bit of a drip on the end of there, but if you come back in a half an hour, you can just even wipe it off with your finger and it'll self-heal where the drip was and you won't even be able to tell it was there. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. I would love a like, love a comment, love a share. I will see you guys soon with some more projects. Thank you.